How should the intellectual property challenges of generative AI be addressed? As we speak, there are many lawsuits that are has been filed against OpenAI for the user data in their products without the user consent. And these lawsuits are not only against OpenAI, but all the products that are built upon public uh, free data, they are being sued. For example, Adobe recently released their Firefly model for generative AI. And it is also being sued by creators for the misuse of their data. And these concerns have grown out in many ways. For example, recently, Hollywood writers have come out and protested against ChatGPT writing scripts for the movies that are serious concern for their jobs. EU has recently started regulating the AI companies and they have made stricter remarks against the generative AI used for misinformation and propaganda and disinformation campaigns. Like you have seen recently, the deep fakes have emerged for Donald Trump being dragged in the roads. Um, also Pope uh, advertising uh, uh, for the Balenciaga brand company and a lot of similar other deep fakes. And these lawsuits are a huge problem uh, for enterprise adoption in many ways. And a lot of countries across and the board are legislating against that. Recently, Japan has made laws and they have stated that AI generated content will not be subjected to copyright law, which is against a lot of other lawmakers' understanding of what public and private data is. In the U.S., it's still a huge issue. And in the U.S., they recently had congressional hearing to know more about these things. And I believe there will soon be legal interventions coming to protect some of the basic user rights. And I also believe that China is going to start their own legal framework to protect users from defects and disinformation. Why does generative AI make up answers? In order to understand why ChatGPT makes up answers um, and why it's sometimes wrong um, and sometimes blatantly wrong, you need to understand how ChatGPT works. How it works is on a principle of LLM, which is large language models. And how we make large language models is by first converting our human languages like English, Chinese, Spanish, French into numbers. And when you convert your letters and sentences um, and paragraphs into numbers, only then you can start making comparisons and positions. Uh, for example, verbs, subject, object, you have to make a mathematical model of how to position them in a way that it makes sense. And once the large language models do this encoding, decoding, what is it doing it? It is only matching your input and the questions with the answers that can be found in all the huge data that it's being trained on. So ChatGPT does not have a brain of its own. It does not think like us. It's not a human being. The only thing it does is that it finds similar context. So it's, and there's something called similarity search. So it finds the answers based on the similarity of your input question. So it's very important how you ask the question because it can, it can only find answers that are similar to your question. It has no way to finding out what your real intent was. And this is why sometimes you ask it a question that it does not understand and it comes up with perceived similar answers that has no relevance to your query. So this is what the technology is very flawed. And you must understand that there is no intelligence that chat GPT possesses. It's the human beings that have intelligence and algorithms simply reproduce what they're trained on.